keep that in mind. But on the other hand, when we calculated this number, what we, what we expect should fall in between 22 and 24. If the number we get was 22 and 24 after we measured this patient's bicarb after later, that means it's purely metabolic acidosis. Perfect. That means, wow, wait a minute. The patient's bicarb dropped, bam, you see up. Their pH dropped, which means metabolic acidosis. The only way is to use their lungs, right? The lungs is going to say, oh, there's so much CO2, let's pump it out. So when it goes up, the bicarb is going to go up, so they're going to try to what? Drop it. But hyperventilate, once this goes back down, like I said early on, right? Then our pH can then go up, right? So to see how much their pH has dropped, you'll be able to calculate the number, and it falls between purely metabolic acidosis. Now, wait a minute. Don't get too excited. That's the only time. But! Let's say we do the math, and the number we got was 18. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Or the number is 27. As you can see, the number is higher or lower than we expected. It's telling us something, so something secondary is going on. I'm going to start with the higher number. So let's say we get 27. We're punching the numbers, and eventually the patient's PCO2 was still at 27. That means, simply means, they're retaining CO2 inside their lungs. It's inside the lungs. They're retaining more CO2. That means the lung is not working right. That is called what? Respiratory acidosis. I haven't talked about respiratory acidosis yet, but very easy. Remember from the beginning of this lecture, this is metabolic, this is respiratory. If CO2 starts to go up, what will happen to your pH automatically? Goes down. That's respiratory because now this is the only respiratory. And I'll talk about that later, you know, in another lecture. But the point is, when the expected pH CO2 is higher than what you found, when you did the, you punch in the numbers, it's always going to be a... Uh, it could be a board question, it could be an exam question. They'll give you all those numbers and they'll tell you oh, what would be expected PSCO2. Later on, you have to use the P winner's formula. You're punching the numbers and you're like, hmm, wow, that's a little higher than what I expected for the PSCO2. It should be a little lower than that. Guess what? They're retaining it. So that's called a combined problem where now they have a metabolic acidosis and they have a respiratory acidosis to start off with. Now, on the flip side of things, let's talk about a lower number. The lower number basically is telling us that now they've hyperventilated so much, so much that they not even have enough CO2. That means they're having a respiratory alkalosis. Just know that. And aspirin is notoriously known for that. You get metabolic acidosis, remember from what part? And you get a respiratory uh, alkalosis because they hyperventilate so much, they lose so much of the PSCO2. That's actually an important point you should know. Um, to kind of wrap up this lecture, we talked about definition. It's all about, all about the bicarb when it comes to metabolic acidosis, right? And we talked about pathophysiology, what causes it. We call it by the clinical features diagnosis. How do we treat? You treat the cause. Remember, there's so many things that can cause metabolic acidosis, it's just not one thing. So you want to find it, fix it, leave it alone. Good. But, because what's missing? My buddy up here, bicarb. What do you do? You give them bicarb, sodium bicarbonate, okay? You give them sodium bicarbonate, and it takes a while for their bodies to titrate to it, and it kind of get better. If they have a bad like, <gasps> if I do that for like an hour, what do you think? I'm going to be tired. So if I'm tired, I'm going to have to put the patient on the ventilator. Because then they can't help it. And again, it retains, I don't want them to retain CO2. We put them on the ventilator, and, and uh, that should take care of it. I hope this lecture was very helpful for you guys. I'm going to be coming out with more lectures. Uh, probably DK coming up soon. Uh, shoot me a comment. Send me an email. Let me know if you need any questions answered. Any topic you want me to talk about, I'm always available for you guys. Thank you very much. And I want you to check out my new website, FTP. INC.org is actually called Future Teaching Physicians. Future Teaching Physicians. It's a website, it's called FTPinc.org. I really, really want you to go on the website, register, 
you know, uh, you can submit an article. We got a lot of videos, you know, waiting for you guys, scripts, stuff about, you know, just check it out. You're probably going to want to tell your friends all about this. Add me on Facebook. Look for FTP uh, Incorporated. Uh, it's, uh, it's another group for medical students. I want anybody all across the world to join this group, and let's do this together. Right, thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye-bye.